Hello, friends. It is good to be with you again this week. You might be able to hear the gentle rain in the background. We're getting some rain this morning. The temperatures have turned cooler this week. It feels a little bit more like fall. And it makes me wonder when the leaves are going to begin to turn. I do hope that you were in worship with us this past week at First United Methodist Church of Bella Vista, Arkansas. I was honored to be asked to preach this past week, and the message I hope you've had time to reflect on was whether our faith is based on merely keeping the rules or on building a loving relationship with our God. Rules are hard to keep. <laughs> we quibble on the specifics. We wander. We bend rules to meet our worldly desires. We rebel, just like Adam and Eve rebelled and ate the forbidden fruit. We rationalize our way out of it, just like they did. Oh, one bite shouldn't cause us to die. Rules lead us to rationalize, to pass judgment. Judgment leads to misunderstandings and divisiveness. Divisiveness leads to hate, and hate leads to chaos. There must be more. God wants more. God wants to change us from the inside out. So only rule that we would need would be to love. To love God and to love others. Our faith should be a matter of the heart. That is where our Creator God will bring out the best from us. I read a recent devotional in the upper room which spoke to this message, this me message of keeping accepted societal rules or not keeping them versus changing our hearts. So let me share it with you. The supporting scripture for this is from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 18 through 23. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus answered, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. And he replied, All these I have kept since I was a boy. And this was a a person who is asking Jesus questions. All these I have kept since I was a boy. When Jesus heard this, he said to himself, you still lack one thing. Sell everything, everything you have, and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the person asking the questions heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. This is scripture from the book of Luke, and we give thanks for this holy word. So let me share the Upper Room Devotional. It is called Surrendering All. It is written by Steve Wakefield, and Steve Wakefield lives in Georgia. In 2017, I pleaded guilty to one count of bank, bank fraud. Due to the felony conviction, I was required to surrender my CPA license, which meant that I had to physically return my certificate. As I began removing the certificate from its frame, I started to cry. When I saw the label that read Main Street Framing, this caused my tears. My parents had been so proud of my accomplishment that they had my certificate framed in my hometown. This experience made me think of the wealthy ruler in Luke 18. Up until this point, I had kept the rules. I had gone to church. I'd lived a pretty straight and narrow life. But I had always put my career, my success, and money before God. If we are intent on living an abundant and successful life, we will place a greater value on God and our relationship with God than on worldly rules and success and career and material possessions or anything else that stands between us and God. 
when we put God first and seek to follow God's will in all that we do, we will have everything that we need. Only then can we experience true success and true relationship. The author asked the parting question, have we surrendered all? Have we put our relationship with God ahead of everything else? Is it a matter of our heart for God? Or are other things getting in the way? Please pray with me. Faithful God, forgive us when we lose sight of the core of our faith when we make the rules our focus, when we quibble and bend the rules as our standard of living, shape our hearts and our desires so that knowing you is our only rule, the only rule for living our lives. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, friends. See you next time.